everyone and welcome back to Beyond the Bridge episode 21 part 2. This is the second part of the... No, I managed to skip an episode. 20. This is episode 20 part 2. Don't know where I got 21 from. Um, 21 is next week. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so who's navigating who's scouting and uh, what role do you want to be navigating with, bearing in mind that you've all gone to Iron Stallions and uh, picked yourselves up some horses? Well, I'm pretty How good about... at scouting, but I can huh? also lead. But I think I've always done best as a scout, so if somebody else has something better than a plus five to lead us with, I'd probably be How the about some thing. survival, maybe? I can do that. Plus five on that, too. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Is somebody else good at scouting? It makes sense <laughs> because you two have been there and me and Carson not, so game-wise it would make sense. Okay. I have plus three and and perception, have plus. but my stealth is uh, not good. Okay, as long as we can be perceptive, really. Um, so I won't mind uh, taking the lead with survival. Okay. okay. So... Mike, if you could uh, roll a d100 for the weather, and we'll we'll see how it's looking today. All right. Ooh, it's a wonderfully bright, <laughs> sunny day. It's uh, the middle of what's well, game time? It's the mid middle of May. It's quite nice. The the weather's hotting up. Okay, and if you could roll up your survival, and we'll get the show on the road. Um, so that's a 17, and you have three travel actions, which you may spend to navigate, hunt and forage, safe camp, or scout for danger. Okay. So, I think this covers the next three days, right? Yep, for the, the next yep. three-day period. The weather's so good, we and you're fine. could safe camp for all nights. You couldn't do Traveling it. there, I think. Um, so, let's see. How many hexes do I get per day? Um, eight. Because you you have horses, so you'll be double moving. Two. Okay. Um, get, 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 get. I think you're forgetting something, Mister. I'm going to move all the distance. <laughs> move More twice. More D100s. Yeah. Move twice D100. Yep. Got it. There we go. See you running off there. This is what I do. This is what happens when I give players control of tokens. Okay, that's it. But uh, you can still move twice. For me, yeah, we're yeah. still... Yeah, no. Um, that's a 98, so roll again. 14. Um, anything interesting? You're pretty close to Haven. Let's find out what it is. Uh, da -da -da. Uh, not that one. You rolled a 14. This means you get attacked by 14 ancient black dragons. Um, <laughs> Ring it. No worries. No red ones? Got this. Nah, the, I phased the red ones out. Um. So can we still move? Or at, where does it happen when we have moved, or at the start? It, it'll be at the end. So, hang on. Hmm. Okay, so... As you're walking north out of, um, out of Haven, you uh, pass by a familiar sight to some of you. Um, Tal and uh, Lynn, I'm pretty sure you've headed straight north before. Mm -hmm. um, so you recognize the small little uh, farmer's hut uh, with a little vegetable patch outside. And as you're walking along, you see uh, an unfamiliar man leaning on the, the fence that uh, surrounds the uh, area. And he's wearing um, like tattered trousers and his bald shaven head. He's got uh, blue tribal tattoos, like kind of woad uh, tattoos, spiraling all down his uh, back and arms. And he's chewing on um, like a carrot 
that it looks like he's like just freshly pulled out of the, the ground. And as you're as you're walking by, the man grins and waves out to you. Hello. Hey guys. He doesn't look like a farmer. No, he doesn't. I don't know what a farmer looks like, but not like that. Do I recognize any of the tattoos? Um. Give me a history check. Can I assist with my barbaric knowledge, tribal and stuff? Yeah, yeah, you can give him a, a advantage to that roll. Ah, okay. Good. Um, Twenty-two. Hmm. Twenty-two. Maybe, maybe I connect with him mentally. And like, do you know anything about yeah. tribal issues? Now that you mention it, yes, indeed. Ah, all right, thank you. You see, uh, telepathically, Ashram is very eloquent. <laughs> oh, right, they have like a different voice. Sorry. It's something that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. If it is the Brennan clan or whatever they're called, we have encountered them before. Me and Carson um, for sure, so. Have you? Yes, multiple times. Uh, we met the hunter outside uh, while going to the forest. Uh, I've ah, actually yes, that's, been that's around true. the barbarian camp multiple times. Okay, so um, looking at the, the, the man's uh, tattoos, you can tell they're actually quite peculiar. As you as you look, you can see that they're not just like broad patterns, but inside the the patterns there are like um, uh, bones almost, like a. Uh, Rib cages and vertebrae, so that the 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 bit that goes down his back it almost looks like he's got a skeleton on him, but then with additional bones filling in all the gaps to make it look like a Celtic knot kind of pattern. And um, both Carson and Asham, for different reasons perhaps, recognize them as the cli the tribal tattoos of the Urqing tribe, a tribe that has long since fallen out of uh, being a tribe, according to the Empire, at least they are extinct. Uh, but the Eucheng tribe practiced cannibalism quite wildly. All right. So, good man, what are you doing all out here? As I'm slipping off his horse. Um, the, the the man like throws the the top of the carrot to one side and walks over, and scratches his his face and goes, "Oh." Oh, I was just looking for something interesting to do. And he, he smiles broadly. And you see, like, uh, needle point teeth. Not your usual cuisine, these carrots, right? <laughs> no, no, no. You! And he points at you, Ashan. You! You'd feed me for a while. But I'm in the mood for something more interesting. Tell me. You're heading away from... And he, he nods back to Haven. Where are you going? What's it to you? I thought maybe you might be doing something interesting. <laughs> Just um, for me to know, do I know that the farmstead is abandoned or is there normally a farmer around this place? Um, this farmstead on the hill, uh, normally a farmer, yes. Yeah. Burned down. You walk past, right. um, there's a burnt farmstead, two more hexes. Further, uh, that's north, not the one we're at. Over the mm -hmm. hill. There, this is like a, there's a little vegetable farmer who lives out on this hill, about got a half a day's walk from Haven. Can we see him around? Is there any movement in the house? Uh, is anyone can't alive? See any movement from the the house or the area of the farm? Um, give me a uh, perception test, Sham, because it sounds like you're asking a question. That a perception test might help. Um. So, as you look around, you do notice um, a, a hoe, like, used for weeding, that's been dropped uh, in one of the, um, like, beds that's half weeded. And it's just, like, carelessly lying on the ground. Can I just belt that guy? Like, boom? Well, you do want to punch him? I want to knock him out, if I can? Yeah, sure. Um, so, first of all, you're just going to, like, go straight for the punch, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah. While we're cool. talking, first he says he wants to eat me, then I see that hoe and my mind makes snap and I say, that's probably not good. Yeah, so you, you come to the obvious conclusion. Um, would you, you like to make a uh, initiative roll? We'll see if he is quicker than you. Wouldn't it be, and that's just for me, deception to see if I can mask deception. my punch? Because you, I, I said, you just go to punch him? You said, yeah, I just go to punch him. Oh, yeah, okay, no, fine. If you had said, yeah, I'm like, uh, hey, look over there, and then foo oh, this is just. I uh, can't initiative. roll, I don't have a token. Ah, uh, no, I'll select no, a No, you just d20 plus you. Come on, what did people do before tokens? I don't know. 19, yes, yeah, so you get the, <laughs> the punch in first. Um, let's. Let's call it. Uh, <laughs> let's call it. Uh, make a athletics check. And he'll pose it with a con check. Okay. So you like slam your fist into him, and he he staggers back, and you see him like shake his head, and he goes, now "That wasn't very friendly." And then he Indeed, like grins and attacks you. Um, so, Lin, um, Carson, and Tal, if you could all be so kind as to roll up initiatives. <laughs> so it's a, sh a sham, followed by Gagosi, followed by Tal, Carson, and Lin. Cool. Okay, so the rest of you are all taken aback, but this situation was a bit odd to begin with, especially to you, Carson, knowing of this man's origins. So, Asham, you, like, hop down off your horse, you go over to him, you take a punt at his face, and he, like, grins and charges forward towards you. Um, you can see he's not, like, holding any uh, weapons or anything. And then he attacks you. Rawr. Uh, attack roll. Plus four. Do -do. Do -do -do -do. So, nope. he runs towards you and just, like, takes a swipe at you with his hands. And for uh, maybe like half a second, you think he's going to punch you, but his palms open and his fingers are out. And then you feel like this scrape across your, your tough, <laughs> scarred skin. And you see that he's like just ripped like at your skin. And it, it feels like to you like the biting of an insect, but to someone else, that could have been pretty bad. Um, so Tao, you, you see um, a sham just punch this dude. And then uh, Kaigosi goes in for the attack. What'd you do? Yeah, I, I could have explained stuff, but no. <laughs> um, you're, you're muted, uh, Mike. You're muted. It keeps not being, uh, not going all the way back. Sorry about that. Uh, I see one of my companions getting attacked. I'm not necessarily going to kill him, but I'm going to attack this guy with some martial arts. And if I do knock him out, it will be a knockout, not a kill shot. Cool, cool. Um, so that's two hits and some damage. Uh, you don't knock him down, so okay. you injure this guy pretty badly, but he seems like just livid. It's kind of like that, okay with that, you know, kind of upset kind of frown. Um, what's it look like when you attack him? You, you... I probably go for pretty straightforward, like, punches and kicks. So it's just you hop off the holes, a couple of boop boop poofs. Yeah. Yeah, you say exactly. that's pretty straightforward, but I, I imagine some Bruce Lee shit going on there. Well, it's okay. straightforward Bruce Lee, no like yeah, fancy straightforward tricks monk going on. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Carson, what do you do? Uh, I like all the tools I have will probably kill him unless I want to expend a spell spot. So, uh, I'm probably like sitting there, grinning, and here's. Maybe he has something in his mind, and it's like, what does human flesh taste like? <laughs> I think you um, you get back a surprisingly friendly and calm, almost, response. Quite pleasant. It's a texture unlike anything that you have <laughs> ever tasted. And then it's Lin's go. What do you do? Uh, I direct the... Uh... 
uh, Tau to hit again with a uh, uh, battle maneuver. Oh, cool. So uh, it's a bonus. Like a strike or something? Yeah, exactly. Cool. So an extra 1d8 for damage. Oh, nice. Um, so let me. Yeah, you hit. I'll do that and then another d8. Yeah. Okay. So an extra three damage. Um, so if yeah, it hits. you like slam this guy roundhouse in the head, and his his like angry face kind of like dies down, and he like staggers back a bit and frowns, kind of kind of d disappointedly. But he doesn't look phased. All right. A sham. What do you do? He, um, phased. He, He's like he's a bit wobbly. Okay. But you 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 should should probably think that he should have gone down by now. This guy's been in a couple fights. He has got yeah, me a I, I'll, I'll keep with the fist fight stuff, but I go for the bear hack grapple. Okay. Uh, acrobatics or um, athletics opposed by um, uh, as, no it is yeah. So. He'll oppose you with acrobatics. Mm, that was bad. Okay, so you like come in and try to bear hug him, and I think he just like drops down into a squat, and you just grab the air, and he comes up uh, in front of you and grabs your arms while they're like tucked, and he goes in to bite you. Oh. So you see his like needle point teeth more open and lunge towards you. But you managed to like throw him away yeah. and you're back. No, my my biceps is too big, he can't get his mouth on it. And I, I think he says the food needs its friends. In a kind of like mocking laugh. Tao, what do you do? <sighs> More punching. So the first blow's uh, a KO if you want it. Oh, yeah. I'll take a, a knockout. So what's it look like? Time. Um, so he probably makes his quib at a sham, and then Tal just like kind of cartwheels behind him and like kicks him in the back of the head, and drops him. He kind of goes, <laughs> falls down. So yeah, you've got an you've got an unconscious uh, Uchen tribesman. What are you gonna do? I step down from the horse. I'm like, good work, fellas. I look at the others. And say, I, I I I might have explained this, but. These guys, they eat people. I don't think it's a good idea to leave them sitting here. Uh, it apparently tastes really tasty. With like a nice texture to it. Wait, Carson, you've seen what we did to the last guy who eats people. You sure you want to talk about this? I have not eaten people. I just how do you know him then? how he tastes like. How when did you like. ask him? Right now. I didn't I, hear I anything. I connect mentally with you, and I'm like, like this. Ooh, get out of my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I bind this guy up, first of all. Yep. Mm. So you wrap him in some heavy ropes and tie him to the, the fence. You guys might want to check the house for the farmer. Maybe that yeah. carrot was just dessert. Tal's already, like, checking the farmstead for any okay. signs of him. So you, like, walk up to the door, and the first sound that greets you is the buzzing of flies. You swing open the door, the stench hits you. Like, not rotting, because it hasn't been out long enough. He was probably killed today. But that kind of, yeah. you know, that meaty smell that just pushes its way up your nostrils. And then you see him, the farmer, very much dead. He has a pair of carrots jammed into his eye sockets, and his rib cage is exploded open with a disturbing lack of internal viscera. It almost looks like someone just scooped out his innards. Other than that, he, he looks quite well, and you can uh, determine that he was killed by being struck in the back of the head. Because you can find that like the back of his skull looks like it's either been slammed against something very hard, or bashed in with a rock. Yeah. i probably take him outside... Um... If well, that sounds kind of difficult since he's so torn apart. But I guess if there's some sort of 
tarp or blanket or cloth or something nearby, like if he has a tablecloth or something. Yeah, so you, you go over so to his bed, like, rip off the blanket, cover him. Just tries to take him outside, give him a proper burial, even if it slows us down by like a half hour, hour. Asks a sham or... Uh, how about well? Well, yeah, uh, two questions. I love my first. Instinct. Do we know the punishment for murder in Haven? Death. Uh, um, like, would it be would acceptable be for us to string that guy up? Um, yeah, probably. I'm. You could also uh, march him back to Haven. Uh, there might be a reward, um, or hand yeah. him to the Ebonwing mercenaries. Um, but the the justice of uh, Duke von Eristoff for the crime of murdering a uh, a farmer. It would be it would be a punishment of death. No, I, I would suggest uh, two of us bring him back to town, collect any bounty or whatever, and the other two dig the grave while the rest come back. Then um, sounds good. But, um, hmm. How about Carson digs the grave? I don't trust him with this guy. I I just have a talk. Anyone else in agreement? Wait, I can uh, stay dig. Yeah, uh, on question. Can I detect force on an unconscious person? Can you detect thoughts on an unconscious person? Uh, no, because it's surface thoughts only, right? And when they're unconscious... Yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, it's originally surface thoughts without the saving throw, and then you can spend another turn to um, go deeper, and then there's a saving throw. Hmm. Hmm. Let me check the spell. Do do do. I will get back to you. Uh, detect thoughts... I look around for shovels, and the first one I see, I hand to Carson. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's shovels. It's a farm, of course. There's shovels. Yeah, I, I, I just yeah. shove the shovel into Carson's arms. Get started. Sorry, can I at least talk to him? No, please? no, nothing good can come from this. Get started behind the house. Like, give me a moment no. until uh, God decides sure if I can read his mind or not. Away. The metal end is for digging. The other one is for holding. Off, off. But I'm here for information. No buts, you Carson. know that. He's an obvious source of knowledge we don't do. I give him a hard shove. <laughs> you make me very sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it, it sounds like two of you are heading back to town with the, the prisoner. Um, which two of those? It's a sham and... I, I don't uh, I, I don't care, guys. I mean, as long as it's not Carson with the can we, at, can we at least wait till he wakes up? Have a little no. shot and then turn him. I'll, I'll stay no. with Carson and dig. Maybe okay. he knows where back. secret treasure is. I you like treasure? Carson, if you want, you can have a look around and see if he's left anything in the house. That's and I'll idea. start digging. <sighs> but I can do both. <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, I, I suggest I lend the horse from Carson and just string him over the horse so we're faster. That yeah. sounds reasonable. We ride right back to Haven and collect okay. the All right. Say to Boyak if you want. Send him back to Haven, bound and gagged. So, um, just to be clear, a sham and... Tau. Tau. Okay. So, the, um, so Lynn and Carson... You stay there. You dig a, a poor grave for this man who had the Shit, unfortunate the unfortunate uh, look of being in a hex when a random encounter occurred. Um, Carson, do you, yeah. are you looking around the um, the farmstead? Was that something you were Absolutely. doing? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the farmstead. Uh, I left my imp by, do uh, the digging it's, on my it's still the, deer. Yeah, the... the Imp does not dig. It's not some menial task laborer. It <laughs> fails, and you look very, very, very uh, sad when the, the shovel just like keeps dropping on the ground and scooping up like a teaspoon of dirt at a time. Um, but yeah, looking around the, the of those teaspoons. <laughs> yeah, looking around the um, the farmstead, there's there's nothing much. There's blood stain where the, the farmer was, and the small pots and pans and various miscellaneous of a farmer, but he was a poor man, living off his own vegetables, maybe making a bit of uh, barter in town, but you can't find anything of any note. Um, Lynn, um, are you a particularly devout person? Do you say any words when you bury him, or is it just to kind of turf him in the hole? 
Uh, I'm, I'm really not that devout. I guess I wish I could say some words, but I don't really know what words those would be. So I kind of. Oh, uh, I, can I hope you rest well, and then shovel off the earth. Okay. Lynn, so, do you want religious words? <laughs> Follow after me. That's I'll all right. That's all right. <laughs> Okay, so um, Tal and uh, Sham, you're, you're riding back to uh, town with uh, this man strung over the, the back of your horse. And about halfway there or so, um, he, he wakes up and you, you hear him go, What? He's gagged. He oh, can't he's go. He's gagged? Oh, okay. What? He um, can't go shit. So um, he begins to like thrash around a bit. On the back of the horse, but you tied him up there pretty well. Uh, do you stop and do anything, or is it just straight to town? Straight to the scene, yeah. I suggest. Make sure he's secure, keep going. Okay. Um, so you're just gonna hand him off to the Seneschal? Uh, it'll probably yeah, be you hand him off to um, the, the militia captain, militia sergeant. Yeah, whoever um, is in charge of that stuff. Uh, what was his name? Yeah. Explain the tribal background and that the farmer has been eaten and that he had a carrot in his mouth and there were carrots involved. <laughs> Love carrots. Okay. Important details. I like it. Yeah, it, for me it's beyond reasonable doubt, so yeah. Okay. Bring him up, boys! So, Seneschal Milos thanks you for carrying out uh, the justice that is so often forgotten in times. And that by ensuring his return, you can rest easy knowing that the farmer's family who live in Haven will be able to know that justice was done. Um, the Duke, of course, has set aside a small stipend for such frontier justice and gives you ten gold okay. and takes the prisoner from you. So, you ride back to uh, the, the party and you all meet up again. Uh, it's now uh, midday. So you've used up one of your travel actions, but made a little profit. Right. And poor Yu Qing tribesman, he is gone. His last Pure meal cannibal. was delicious, though. So, oh, there. you are a bad person. If you want to roll a d100 and move twice, you can see how the, the rest of your journey goes. Oh, God. Okay. Boop, boop. Similarly, I like those apparently. Rolls, I know. I'm getting us XP. coming when you roll for damage. Yep, it's totally fine. You're perfectly okay. Keep going. Yeah, all right. Uh, are the black spots on this grass here? Uh, the black spot is, as uh, Lynn said, it's a burnt-out farmstead. It's a larger place. It looks no, like I it mean, might around want... uh, the plains, that black, oh, the black lines that, there. Oh, that just uh, just means it's like bad grassland. It's like patchy. Okay. Uh, in places, it's not really the kind of verdant grassland you'd expect to be arable farmland. Okay, so you okay. get to the hilltop, at night falls, make a safe camp. Yep. Okay. Um, make the safe camp. So as the the sun sets and you have your, your tents set and your, your horses uh, picketed, do any of you have a scene you wish to uh, enact for inspiration? Uh. I can do one if no one else is up for it. Go for it. Yeah. Excellent. Go for it. We'll type All it. right. So maybe I have like a drink in hand, looking into the fire. And we flash back to my previous inspiration scene with Yostos insulting my god or calling I remember that. It's my girlfriend. <laughs> so, so you just see, um, what, Robin, uh, Robin Treehopper? Hedgehopper. Oh, is that your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and we see this, like, weird eye humanoid thing. Anyway, then, uh, then we skip to, like, the end of the session. And we see myself, like, 240 meters away from Robin and staring into the eye of the palm of my hand. And then it does something really nice, maybe like helps old, old Grandy or Granny. You see something like shift in Carson's eyes. And then he carries on to the tavern and gets really drunk for a long time. 
Yeah. Let me see like a quick scene from a uh, weird tentacle beast arriving saying, You have been forgiven. Carry on your duty. Uh, similar to that. And uh, yeah, and then I'm not drunk anymore. And uh, then we return to uh, Mr. Asham. Yes, staring at him through the fire. Okay. Uh, so, does anyone have a, a question for um, Hentai about that scene? Yes. As Carson <laughs> stares through the flames at Asham. Are you plotting revenge against Robin Hedgehopper? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on a player level, I can't do that. <laughs> like, no, you can can't totally go. do that. I would love that. I would love to kill it. But he, you can. Now, is your character still harboring uh, ill thoughts against Robin Hedgehopper? That's how I phrase yeah. it. Like. If you have like insulted his god on several occasions, and it's like it's, pro it's probably like he's torn uh, because on the on the other hand, it's Saint Dave Robin. He has his duty on like I will serve my god. If you insult her, I must kill you. On the other hand, he has like his human side and like I sort of like you. You're sort of a nice person, so he's like conflicted. A part of him really wants to kill you, one part of him like really wants gold. <laughs> so, one set of schizophrenia, that's what we're at. I think so. That Came actually across. explains a lot. <laughs> that makes so much sense now! Okay. So, so we see Carson with this, this dark look in his eyes as he stares through the flames. But does the, the fire like glints off your eyes? Is there a flicker of something else there? Or is it just the stars in the sky as we pan up to the night? Yeah, so I actually, actually, I scratch my chest a little bit. And that's what? Scratch, 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 scratch. As you yeah. scratch your head, uh, the necklace with the rat's eye kind of bobs around a bit. No, I don't scratch my head, I scratch my chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a necklace dangling. Yeah, around. it bobs around. True. Yeah, it bobs yeah. around. Yeah. Asham sits next to you in the fire and burps really loud. <laughs> the the fire probably like goes <laughs> like where your your alcohol stench reaches it. Okay. <laughs> so um you spend an action to make a safe camp, and you you head off on the morrow. So um roll up the hundred, roll tw uh, move twice. Let me actually check the map. Hey, uh, you're pretty good. Uh, mm. just keep going. Yeah, you're all good. Worst Fine. case, we could check for directions, guys, with survival roll. Oh, trust me, it's it's real easy. Yeah. Uh, Things in Cardinal I think directions. Even, uh, even Lynn probably could find the way. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Perfectly fine as you walk across the open land of the Uden Plains, the boggy marsh beneath you going shloop, shloop. And one more roll, and you should be there. I think so. Let's see. Does that take us anywhere? Yep. That roll. No, 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 you're fine. Don't, don't worry. There we go. I think. Let's see. Boop. So. Yep, yep. Perfect. That should be it. So as you ride up the hill and down into the uh, Stolks woods, you see a familiar sight to some of you: the stonework of the elven ruins of Melanthor. The skeletal bodies of the orcish warriors felled here nearly a month before crust the ground, and a thick, dark red vine has spread out over everything. Its tendrils hang heavy over the edges, and you can see where the uh, faltering palisade the orcs were constructing has been consumed by this ravenous plant, turning to soft mulch beneath its embrace. The fountain, for which the adventurers first roamed to here, is still spewing forth this thick red throthing liquid. And you can see bobbing up and down in its small items that catch you. On the far uh, end of the stonework, you can see a um, almost Aztec style ziggurat, like a uh, a small stepped pyramid with a set of stairs going up the front to a dark archway which leads into the Temple of Melanthor. 
all around is an eerie silence, only disturbed by the bubbling and frothing of the fountain. What High is above it with this you, place the and sun climbs down through the sky, casting a dark red glow over the scene, and uh, the shadows from the foliage had to make this a macabre scene. Those vines look uh, creepy somehow. And not just the mushroom creepy. forests. They were not here last week. They've grown um, they, up they, quite quickly. They, they were here last week, but they're, um, they've advanced since last week. You, you can see a, a very determined growth. Yeah. Like last week, they were like a minor detail. Yeah. These, these were not as prodigious as they are now. We should, tell. We should keep care of Keep careful. Are they dangerous? You tree hoppers, you know, there's stuff around plants. Maybe have a look. She like kind of shrugs and like looks over. I guess like she doesn't have nature. I don't think survival would tell me it. Well, would survival tell me about dangerous plants? Yeah, yeah. I think it'll just let you know if they were like some mundane, dangerous plant that you don't want to eat or rub against. Um,. These don't seem entirely natural. Um, like they're thick. You can kind of see them pulse every now and again. <clears throat> they don't have enough leaves, enough foliage, to be feeding from the sunlight that filters through. It yeah. more looks like the uh, undergrowth has turned into this thick red carpet. I look for a thin one and just chop it off with my axe and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so as you, like, chop it off with your axe, it, like, gushes out with thick red liquid. Not sticky, like sap, but thick and pulsy, like blood. And as you hold the, the bit that you've chopped off, it just kind of thrashes about in your hand a bit, and then kind of goes limp. I don't like this. When we leave here, we will burn this place down. How about that? Right the last I time. Take out the, I take out a vial and, uh, like, stab in one of the plants and try to collect the blood. It, it flows out dark, thick and red. Perfect. Uh, I don't have blood. Good. Maybe we I should spend some time securing the horses in a safe location yes. around here. Yes. Uh, sure. Not too close, but uh, as the way away. So we are plenty of space between them and the plants. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Do we use one of our travel actions for safe camp for horses? I mean, if you want to do that. And I won't uh, plague you with uh, rolling encounters for the horses. Does yeah, that leave we... us with uh, one action left, or was yeah, one of our actions? Yeah, we're going to be going into, into the ruins, yeah. I suppose. Aren't we? Yeah. Because otherwise, I think I would just say we'd use a free forage action if we have any left. But Okay. So you yeah. use yeah. a travel action, find a safe area, a ways away from this rancid horror to sequester your horses and perhaps to return to when night falls and return to the ruins of Melanfor you do as the setting sun is now beginning to dip below the horizon you see these thick red vines coating everywhere and the burble and hiss of the fountain continuing beneath the stars that are beginning to emerge Do we need to make camp or can we go into the ruin now? Um, it's dark in inside anyway Third watch so you've like got another couple hours of being Let's go player then. characters so yeah. and we could just head in yeah it's dark inside anyway i assume so let's get cracking i think we have at least one or two humans with us right i'm yeah. human thank I you i have torches tau tau lights a torch and holds her short sword out in the other hand okay i go first mm, i follow so, you stride into the uh, center of the ruins, stepping heavily on the vines beneath you, and as you step on them, you can feel that pulse through the soles of your boots. It's almost like a heartbeat throbbing beneath your feet, and you see that thick, frothing red liquid leak out everywhere you step, and as you look back, you can see your footprints there in dark, murky, wet patches on the vines. You reach the bottom of the stairs that ascend the 
elegant elven stonework, once a thing of beauty, but now defaced by orcish invasion and covered in thick, corpusculent vines. You climb the stairs, and before long you're standing at the entrance, the awaiting archway leading into the familiar for some open area of the Melanthor Temple. Who was here before? Who actually went inside to claim the barrels? Um, Mary and Mike V. Um, so, yeah. Lin and Tal, you've both not only visited this location, but you've been inside the um, initial rooms of the temple before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe so. Okay. Well, so the very last uh, thing we did was to get to the barrels from inside the room and see that there was a way down. Um, so, are you striding in and having a look around? Refamiliarizing so. yourself? Okay. See um, what's changed. Oh, oh well. Some QDM this... will actually draw you what you see this time around. About Ashton this bloodish. Oh, you. No, no, ladies first. Uh, about this blood like liquid from the plants, uh, can we tell if it's uh, poisonous or acidic or somehow harmful in itself? Yeah, um. Mm, make an investigation check. You, you can have advantage oh. if someone helps you. Yeah, yeah I have. <laughs> well, that sort of helped. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, um, I don't know much about it. It tastes that. like cherry. Like, like you examine it, maybe like dip your finger in it, taste it, rub it between your fingers. It it stains your fingertips red or your your gloves red, and it has a a stringent taste on your tongue. Kind of makes you want to like immediately spit it out, but you can't tell if it's got any harmful properties beyond its obvious foulness. My tongue doesn't kind of fade away or my, my gloves don't get dissolved at least. Uh, no. no. Um, That's something. You don't die. And while striding around, Ashton keeps a special eye out for the walls and the stonework to see if his dwarven stonework eyes see any secret passages or secret shift ways or something like that. Okay. Nice. So, uh, this temple has religious symbols, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, can I roll my religion? Oh, you, See what you could I just ask Tell, being an elf, you probably know. You know what? I'm... <laughs> Let's see what I want first. And no, Tal, all right, like, I asked Tal. Tal, so, you, you like know? consult your knowledge, and then you go to ask Tal, and she's like, "I'm not familiar with which gods the elves in these lands worship. Uh, we had very different customs from where I come from." All right. If you see elven language, you would like translate it. I can do that for you, but um, I know I'm not elven. too much for use. So, thank you for your consideration. So, like, nah, so the last time you were here, what kind of things did you encounter? We killed a lot of orcs. Oh, I like killing orcs. It's fun, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so squeal really when you hit them hard enough. It's, that's how you know you did it just right when they start squealing like piglet, uh, piglets. I, 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 I thought I was supposed to be the evil character. <laughs> it's not evil to hit orcs. On my that's how. That, that's what orcs are made for to hit them. Oh, so you're just a sadist. I no, don't care. Just a bit bloodthirsty. That's not the same thing at all. It's not even blood. Th that's what ex uh, th 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 That's what orcs are made for to hit. It's like Drink saying stuff. wine is made for drinking, orcs are made for hitting. That's how it works, Carson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, orcs are supposed to be hit. Yeah, you see? Nothing sadist about that. Yeah, not at all. Like. And you were just in this first room when you get got here? Okay. 
So, yeah. let me put down some people. Boop. Uh, boop. I don't think oh. we've been here. Or at least we didn't see it drawn out. Uh, yeah, you, you didn't see it drawn out. You just uh, narratively went in and had a look around. Um, hang on, let me uh, just... Ba -da 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 do uh, that. Oh, hang on. I'm already trying to fix my HP bar, so... so no, 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 uh, token layering everything. So, oh. um, what you, you see is beyond the doorway, it's stonework once again. Ahead of you is the main uh, temple room. Um, so, the altar is this little purple uh, square here. Boop -a -doop. And the rooms you've already searched are the ones around the altar room. So here, 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 and here. Those rooms you've all already gone in and had a look through, uh, Lin and Tal. There where you found um, vestibules for the priesthood, uh, corpses of elves uh, slammed against uh, bookshelves, you know, the pages ripped apart and desiccated by the blood of the slain, uh, where the casks of the elven wine were found, and various other places that looked like um, uh, cells for the priesthood. You know, sleeping cells, not like prison cells. Um, the, the path down, uh, beyond the um, beyond the, the altar, you can see the stairs going down, and there's also a, a, a path up to the left which uh, curves around. Um, and you're not you're not sure about that when you haven't investigated that yet. Um, all around the the walls, the stonework of the main altar room, are these elegant drawings, like carvings into the into the rock, and they seem to be religious in nature, but as you look at them, Carson, you, you can't decipher their, their meaning. There are clear elven figures, and they're, they're carrying something in in one of them, like a like a, a vessel. But you can't understand the, the symbology, mainly because it's been defaced really badly by, by the orcs. They've gone out of their way to smash the beautiful mosaics of the, the elves, to to crush the rock in which it's carved, to scratch off the elven ruins which were obviously running along the bottom and top borders of these beautiful works of art. It seems my job already has been done. <laughs> God. Yeah, so that is, that is what you uh, see before you. A, a large room with lots of rooms that have been explored, and uh, two suggest... obvious paths that one could venture. I suggest we clear this store before we go deeper, maybe. If you like. I would feel safer knowing that we don't leave any poison plant vine monsters in our back. <laughs> Lin is also completely tell, convinced. Since, since this is elven, uh, if we find anything, let's say, valuable, but maybe Holy-ish, you wouldn't have a problem with us nicking that, would you? Well, the temple's been desecrated. I doubt we could do much more to harm that. Um, I'd rather recover the, any sacred artifacts so that we might uh, put them to good use. I, I like that. We will. Uh, so, how about we, we, we go to the rooms you haven't been on this layer? Maybe. The Tau points to the left or the northern passage that kind of strays off from the others and says, I'd like to check this way before going further deeper. Asham takes it as a go get it and walks along. <laughs> okay. Yep. So could you uh, roll me a perception chest, uh, Asham? Nice. Okay. Cool. Uh, do 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 do. 
Interesting. Um, interesting. Um, okay. This is taking way too long. This is freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, it's so oh, this is at the moment. Remember the last time he took that long Carson and we faced about 30 to 40 mindless drug people? Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah, fun times. The last time. So that means we get a lot of experience, right? Yeah. That's how a good thing. We get level 4. We're about that right now. I have level 4. Uh, it's just level 5. Do, do, do. And okay, nearly there. Bear with me. No worries. Okay, okay. excellent. So, Sham, as you as you walk that way, uh, you can see the the stonework is broken and cracked. You can see that the the chamber or the um, corridor has broken from the outside in and the the vines that are growing up around the exterior of the the ruins have like pushed their way through the blood red tendrils hanging in eerily making almost like a uh, like a bead curtain that you have to push your way through beyond uh, the vines you can see a door that looks like it's been um, partially blocked by some rubble and uh, the door is a elegant oaken door with what looked to be like um, uh, like bright green vivid vines growing through the wood of the door and from behind the door uh, you can hear this like chittering sound like a <laughs> and every now and then a scrape like a Does it sound in any way ex insectoid? Yeah, like the image that it conjures to your head is just this, like, the sound you would expect from some massive spider. That kind of, like. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and we're talking about that door I'm standing right next to, right? Uh, no. Oh, that door okay. uh, is normal and silent. Um, then it's. Uh, hang on. Do, do, do. Okay. Well, before we reach that uh, weird sounding door, I would have poked my head into this door just to see if everything's well, if there's loot. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, cool. So, poking your head into that door, uh, you see a pretty dull room. It's uh, filled with uh, barrels and shelves. Um, the shelves have like heavy sacks on them, but you quickly can tell that the barrels don't contain wine or anything, they contain spoiled food goods. And they're the sacks also, they're like apples that have rotten, grapes, uh, strawberries, fruits and berries. It doesn't look like um, there's much in the way of wheat or corn, the, the normal things. It's more kind of like what would be for the average peasant, like fancy fruit. But for elves, they're probably, ah, it grows on trees. Yeah, elf mum. Um, yeah. So, question, do I hear this insectoid sound as well? Um, yeah, after Sham points it out, everyone can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I immediately I think cast we're Beast Fish. Going up there. Boop! You cast yeah. the Speak with the Beast. It is cast. Yeah. yeah. I still don't understand it, right? Um. Hmm. <laughs> no. No, you do not. God damn it. We're not making friends with spiders. Just saying right now, right here, we're not. Why not? 
Have you ever tried to communicate with a spider? Maybe they are Actually, really I have, friendly. Yes. No, they're not. Have you talked to them? Like also, some cats are really evil. The last I spoke to said it was waiting to kill me, and then it turned out it was, and it was a pixie. Everyone knows cats are evil. But they're so cute. Anyway, how about... Does it look like I could punch this door in? Um, it looks like the, the rubble that's fallen in front of it is blocking the door. Like, there's... It's not a great deal of rubble. It's probably like a couple chunks of masonry, but it's like in the path of the door. Um, you could like probably try and like clear a bit of it out, stand on top of like a couple of rocks, and then try kicking it in. Yeah, I would suggest we go in with a bang, guys. We seem to work the last few times. So, uh, how about we clear as much as we can, and then we just go in and do business. That's right. a thoughtful plan. Are you trying to clear the rubble out of the way quietly before, like, big loud kick in, or are you just like, nah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Possible quiet, uh, quiet rubble to the side, and then bam. Okay, so could you please, Asham, make a stealth followed by an athletics? I will assist with both. Okay, um, would you like me to make the no. checks as well? Just give advantage to Asham. That's fine. Okay, and okay, cool. So, nice. With a slow kind of, you slide these heavy bits of masonry to the side. You position yourselves against the door. The sham, you like rub your legs, Give puff nod. your breath, nod to the rest of the party, raise your boot to kick in the door, and we'll take a break. Ah, uh, spoiler, cliffhanger! <laughs> I know, it's wonderful. So, um, yeah, uh, see you all back in a little bit. Stay tuned right. for part three and the thrilling conclusion of A Sham the Door Kicker.